Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Vivs from SlideNerd here. This is my first video in 2014. I hope you guys had a great new year. In this year, we are gonna talk a lot of things out here. And the first one, we start talking about inheritance in Java. So the first question that you have as a beginner is, what is inheritance? Why do you need it? What do you do without it? So let's take a look at what is inheritance first. There is a person, there is a teacher, and there is a businessman. Now if you notice, they have some properties, like if you talk about a person in the terms of a program, you can think of the person as a class. And you can say that the person has properties like name, age, and date of birth, and many other properties that you can imagine. But I have only imagined two over here to make things simple, there is name and age. If you talk about a teacher, you will find out that the teacher again has properties like name, age, the subject which the teacher teaches, maybe the salary, again there are a whole lot of attributes but I've just taken three into the picture. Same goes for a businessman, you can have something like name, age and business category. Now if you observe very carefully, there are certain properties among these three which are common. Now in English or even in the real world you know very well that every teacher has to be a person. Every businessman is also a person, but every person is not really a teacher and every person is not really a businessman. Now representing these kind of relationships is what inheritance is all about. In other words, take the common properties that exist among related individuals and try to make something out of that. That's what inheritance is all about. So let's take a look at a more a specific example. like. In inheritance what you have is you have different classes in your program now there are classes which are less specific like person and then there are classes which are more specific like a businessman so let's take a look at this more general ideas are at the top and more specific ideas are at the bottom for example you can say there is a general class of cycles it has a property say weight let's say the cycle is 5 or 10 kgs kilograms and then you can have a plain bicycle which is a special type of cycle which has a weight which is something which has a name you can have some name like hero hercules whatever which are indian brands out here and you can have a brand again and the same way you can have a geared cycle which is again a very different type of cycle now notice very carefully it has the same common property weight which every cycle has but it has some additional aspects like it has name and brand which this plane bicycle has however it also has more specific properties like number of gears because this is a geared cycle which means it is a special type of plane bicycle which in turn is a special type of cycle so the entire idea behind inheritance is that you make different classes the classes having the common properties are what you call a super class and the classes that have more specific properties are what you call as the subclass now if you didn't understand this let me show you a clear example of what happens without inheritance with the help of a real world example oops there go the two points which i just said i almost forgot to scroll to them hope you don't mind about it so now let's talk about a real example what i want to do is i have my android phone or let's say any other phone for the matter that runs on java Let's say this phone is currently showing nothing here. What I want to do is display a blank window over here on the screen. So let's talk about how that appears. You have your device, you have a white screen that the user sees. This is the blank screen, right? Now even to make this, let's say you have to write a lot of code. So what we will do is we will have a class called window. Now this class will be responsible for drawing these blank screens that you see here. It will have a method like width, let's say it is 3, 480 to 800, that's a standard size which most Android devices and in fact most devices these days have. So let's say the width is 480 which is represented by this width variable here. The height is say 800 and there is a method called draw window which is gonna draw this white rectangle that you see here using the given width and given height. Now this is the basic, in fact it's not even a not even considered a window in today's standards. Now let's take a look at a more special type of window that you wanna make. At this point, someone tells you that, hey, your white windows are looking dirty. How about you add some minimize and close buttons on those windows? So you say, okay, I will do that. You take the same class again and you start modifying it. You make a class called closable window this time. 
you say again this has a width which is say 480 it has a height say 800 it has a draw window method that's gonna draw this white rectangle then you say there is a button width which is gonna be the width of these buttons over here there's a button height that's gonna be the height of these buttons and then there's the minimize window method that's gonna perform the work of minimizing this white screen and let's say there's a close window that performs the work of closing this white screen so this at this point you're saying okay oh my god I had to write a lot of code I wrote the complete class for closable window from scratch but again the other person comes and tells you that hey this window you just made dude it doesn't even work properly this is how a window should look it should have an icon at the top it should have a title bar and then it should have the minimize and maximize buttons and then you begin scratching your head because this time you have to write everything and you have to think about everything which means again you start making a new class you say full window then you say int width int height and then you have the draw window method for drawing stuff you go in button width button height then you say minimize window method will be minimizing this white screen then there's a close window that will close the screen out here there's a string title which represents this title that is going to be displayed here at the top there's the icon width there's the icon height which is over here this orange box that you see there's the icon source which will contain the image that you want to place here and then there's a draw icon which is going to draw this image and basically all these things that you see here are getting far more complicated and you are like oh my god I did it finally but let's say after you make this class someone comes and tells you that hey dude I wanna make a window that has other windows inside which can be minimized and maximized it should also show tables it should have ability to show other things like maybe drawing an animation inside and you will be breaking your head literally if you had to code everything from zero every time you needed something new and this is why we use inheritance we want to reuse stuff that is already existent and only add new features which we did not find in the previous old version so let's see how the same thing works with the help of inheritance I have the same window class over here I have the same now this time this time notice carefully I have a closable window now I know very well that this closable window is gonna have the same functions or you can say the same behavior as this normal window plus some extra stuff like these two buttons over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply create the new variables button width button height and minimize window max close window that's all what is already been created by the window class I'm not going to code that again inside my closable window in other words I have minimized my work I have found a shortcut that makes my life easier as a programmer and that is what inheritance is all about again if you go and take a look at the more specific version here you will see that oh my god I have to write everything from scratch no inheritance doesn't require you to do that you simply say a full window and you say extends closable window in other words you inherit some properties and methods from closable window which is this over here this closable window in turn inherits some properties from the class window which is over here that means width height draw window are added here inside closable window automatically and all the stuff that is inside closable window gets added over here inside your full window automatically which means inside your full window class all you gotta do is define the new stuff that is the title the icon width the icon height the icon source and how to draw an icon how to display the title you don't even have to add any of these variables methods any of this variables methods because they are both inherited from both these classes and this is how inheritance works in the real world and this is why you need inheritance because you don't want to make everything from scratch every time you start coding so let's see how you can create inheritance in Java very simple let's say there's a class cycle and it has a property called int weight so there you go there's the class cycle property has int weight then there is the class by cycle where you use this word extends which is actually a keyword which means you cannot use this word for anything else other than performing inheritance in your code so you say class by cycle extend cycle and here you simply put the string name and the string brand now notice very carefully even though I have not written int weight over here since we have said extend cycle 
a copy of this property is going to be created inside the buy cycle and that is why I have clearly shown three properties over here weight comes automatically from cycle whereas name and brand are created by you inside buy cycle in other words the cycle is a super class buy cycle is a subclass and all you gotta do is create the items that are specific to your subclass without creating the items that belong to your super class inside your buy cycle which is your subclass in other words only specify the new variables and methods that are not a part of the super class inside your buy cycle and that's what inheritance is all about now let's take a look at how this works at a closer angle let's say there's a class cycle same as again weight is 10 something like that there's a method int get weight it returns the value of weight which is 10 like you saw above and then there's the class buy cycle that extends our cycle at this point what we are saying is I want to create a buy cycle which is a special version of a cycle it has a weight it has this method get weight and in addition to these two things that I'm copying I'm gonna add my own stuff which is string brand equals to hero public void get info method I simply say system dot print ln brand and get weight now notice here I have called get weight inside my buy cycle even though I have not defined it because it has been copied automatically from the class cycle thanks to inheritance so if you see the object is gonna look like this buy cycle my cycle is new buy cycle right that's how we create an object and then I simply call the get info method over here now if you notice this object my cycle let's take a clear look at what the object contains so here the my cycle is there it's gonna contain two parts that's gonna be variables and methods inside the my cycle object right my cycle is gonna have this variable brand equals to hero right here it's gonna have this method get info right here but other than these two it's also now the get info method is gonna access brand over here now other than these two it's gonna have the weight equals to 10 which has been derived or inherited from the class cycle over here and then there's also the get weight method and this is why I can have my get weight method refer to the weight variable even though I have not declared both of them over here because by inheritance they are inside our class by cycle as well and then I can also use my get info method to call get weight now notice carefully inside my get info method I have written get weight which is gonna return weight which is nothing but 10 over here and all these literally belong to the class by cycle and this is how inheritance works now I know this is a difficult idea to grasp but remember one thing very well what is common keep it separate what is very specific keep it inside your subclass and your subclass is gonna have all those things which your super class also has however remember one thing the subclass cannot access private variables and private methods of a super class it can access public stuff protected stuff default stuff no problems but private stuff no so in this video we have talked about inheritance at a very high level we try to understand what happens without inheritance and what happens with inheritance in the next video we're gonna dig deeper into inheritance try to understand the different hierarchies about inheritance multi-level inheritance and other stuff like that in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and support our efforts in any way you guys can thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day